Good morning. I am Julie and I'm a keeper here at the Houston Zoo. It's the height of summer and so we're going to take some time, cool off and be inside the bug house for a little bit. Today we're going to talk about the native bugs that you can find all over Houston, in your backyards, in your neighborhoods, and in areas all around our region of Texas. So let's get started. It's a beautiful morning and maybe you want to take that nice little morning walk in the park before it gets too hot. So you're in the park in the shade amongst the trees and you find something really cool. This is a golden silk orb weaver. Now she's not alone. There's actually a second little spider in there with her if you can see that. That's not a baby spider. That is a full grown male. He's a lot smaller than she is. Orb beavers are fantastic spiders to have. We want to have spiders in our neighborhoods. And a lot of people go, gosh, spider, yeah, the lakes kind of freak me out a little bit. Uh, I'm not really sure about them, but there's a special reason why their legs are like that. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Orb weaver spiders are the spiders, if you remember reading Charlotte's Web, it's that kind of spider. They make the big, beautiful web and lots of geometric shapes and patterns. And that web is used to catch their food. These spiders are eating lots of big flies that we don't want in our households. So this web is nice and sticky and the flies get stuck. And the spider, whose little legs that kind of creep us out a little bit, they're shaped specially so they can cross their web and not get their feet tangled and stuck. They come down and wrap their prey in silk. It immobilizes it and they use their very, very mild venom to kill their prey so they can eat it. And so that's why the spider's legs are shaped a little weirdly and that's what they use their webs for. Now the big spider, or female, is catching the big flies our little tiny male is going to be catching all the little, the gnats, the fruit flies, the little midges that we kind of find annoying and then get in our kitchens. He's catching all of those. These are great pest control, so we want these in our neighborhoods. You can see she's brightly colored. They're beautiful spiders, and so we like to have these as we uh, live our, living in our neighborhoods, living in our parks. So if you see one in your neighborhood or your garden, let them be. If you have one that you need to move, you can just scoop it up. You can actually even move these with your hands if you need to, but you can use a cup and move her to a new location. She'll just build a new web and all will be fine. So we've uh, seen our spider, we're still in the trees, and we come across on the bark of a tree, these fantastic little beetles. Well, I say they're little. They're not really that little. These are unicorn beetles, and I'm going to try to take them off for you. They're hanging on to their wood uh, piece just like they would in the wild. They hold on really tightly, so I think we'll just take this out. These are native, what we call rhinoceros beetles, and that's a fancy name for saying that the boys have horns. This is our male. This is her female. You notice she does not have a horn. She is, uh, looks like him other than that, other than that having the horn. The males use the horns in competition over females. So he's got a horn so he can push and shove other me males that show up in uh, trying to get the girl for themselves. So they're herbivores. These guys eat little bits of rotting fruit and berries from the trees. So these are good bugs to have around. They're like nature's cleanup crew. Look at their beautiful coloring. So they spend a lot of time up in their trees. They've got really great little hooks on their toes. They can just grip onto the tree branch, hang on real tight. They don't go anywhere. They do have wings. They can fly. They don't fly very often. They're not super great at it but they're wonderful beetles to have in our backyards and our gardens. And sometimes people are lucky enough to see these. And um, yeah, so these are fantastic to have in our gardens. Um, one thing, if you guys have questions, please let us know. We're here to answer those for you. <laughs> 
So they're fantastically blended in. Like I said, some people can see them sometimes during the day. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about these uh, briefly at the end. But uh, yeah, they're in our trees, so please be look out for them. Also, the baby beetles, they're called larvae. They're sometimes in our gardens too. So if you're planting uh, plants and stuff like that, you might find them in the dirt. It's fine. You can just go ahead, put them back in the ground, and they'll go back down into the dirt. Nature's cleanup crew. So you've been out in the park. Perhaps now you're uh, ready to go on a little trip. Maybe you're going out to another part of uh, Texas. Perhaps you're just going on the outskirts of town. You're in areas where the soil is a bit disturbed. You see something go running past your feet, boldly colored, real quick, and you're like, what was that? Might be her. She's a velvet ant. Velvet ants, well, they're not actually an ant. She's a wasp, a flightless wasp. Now, we think of wasps sometimes as an animal that might be might be kind of aggressive or might be mean. They're not. Uh, this particular wasp, she's actually an herbivore, so she's eating little bits of fruits and vegetables. Uh, they're fantastic at what they do. They're parasitic for their babies, though. So that means they take another insect um, and immobilize it so that their babies can feed off of it. They're wingless because they live underground. Uh, so they don't have the ability to fly because they don't need it. This is a female. Males have wings and are able to fly. And we talk about wasps. She does have a stinger. And if you come across a velvet ant, please do not move them with your hands. Please use a stick or a cup or something like that to help move them. Sometimes people can be allergic to their venom. Males don't have the ability to sting. And that's because the stinger is actually anatomy along with the parts that a female uses to lay eggs. The males don't have those parts, and so they don't lay the eggs. <laughs> She's getting a little camera shy right now. This is how they are in the wild. They kind of fly around real quick, run around from patch of bare ground to a patch with some uh, overshaded vegetation, and that's just how they are. So you'll probably just see this kind of activity from them. As you can see, although she has a stinger, she's not being aggressive, she's just going about her day. So um, they come in a variety of colors. So uh, you may see red and black, you may see white, you may see orange, a really pretty rainbow of colors. These are amazing animals. So perhaps now you're back at home and you're in your garden. And there are some fantastic insects that you may run into there. One of them <laughs> might be this little guy. Let's see if he'll come out for us. This is a praying mantis. He is a young praying mantis. So we don't actually know what species he is. We actually found him on some of the plants that we came, came into our building one day. So praying mantids are amazing animals. They are fantastic pest control. These guys are insectivores. They are fantastic hunters. As you can see, he's super curious. He's just as curious about all of you as we are of him. So he specializes in eating other bugs. They'll eat a lot of flies, a lot of gnats, um, other bugs that we don't want in our garden. This is a fantastic interactive bug. So if you have young ones, uh, this is a great bug to pick up and interact with. And a lot of times, he may even start the interaction with you. So he may jump on your sleeve while you're out walking in your garden and be like, who are you? What are you doing? They're perfectly fine to pick up, kind of have some fun with, take a nice close look, and let them back into the garden where they belong. So you'll see he's a beautiful bright green. You may see that he's got, 
<laughs> He's getting a nice close up here today. This is exactly what mantids are known to do. So you can see, very, very inquisitive. He's bright green. Mantids can come in a variety of different colors, greens, tans, yellows, all from the same batch. They do blend in with their environment, but uh, once you get them out, um, they are pretty distinctive, pretty easy to see. As you can see, he's got nice big eyes for catching prey. He's an ambush predator, so he sits on a log or at a uh, part of a tree folds his legs in. The name praying mantis comes from the folded arms, looks like they're praying. They're actually just waiting for the prey to come by so they can reach out and snag it real quick. He's not venomous. He's just, oh, well, he's grooming his toes now. He likes to be clean, so he's uh, making sure his toes are nice and pretty for all of you. <laughs> These are fantastic animals to get, uh, to have around. And in fact, some gardening stores sell mantis egg cases. So you can bring home a mantis egg case, hatch them out, and you have instant pest control of all kinds in your gardens. So we're going to let this dude go back to <laughs> activity in his little home here, if he wants to come off. So he eats little fruit flies at this point. We haven't gone up to bigger prey yet. It'll be a while. He'll grow up this summer. So you're still walking in your garden, and besides the praying mantis, you might be lucky enough this time of year <laughs> to see some of these. These are a couple examples of the wonderful butterflies that we have in Houston. <laughs> and there goes one into our lobby. That's okay, he's native. So. We have so many different kinds of butterflies in Houston. It's really amazing. So you may see the butterflies visiting your flowers, and those are uh, feeding plants. So our butterflies, uh, they drink a lot of nectar. So they're visiting your flowers. Their mouth part is a little proboscis. It works like a straw. And they uh, dip it into the flower, and they're drinking the nectar. And while they're doing that, they are also gathering pollen. Uh, the pollen is sticking to them. And then they go visit other flowers uh, in your garden and in other gardens. And that's how they're pollinating the plants. And this is really important because a lot of plants need to be pollinated to be able to grow per correctly. So they're doing a really fantastic service for us. Now, Butterflies, like a lot of other insects, are a bit on the decline. We're not seeing as many of them now as we used to. There are some things that we can all do to help with that. And one of them is by carefully selecting the plants we put in our garden. It's important to feed butterflies, but it's also really important to have what we call host plants. Host plants are the plants that the butterfly lays eggs for her caterpillars on. These are different than the plants that they feed on. And we might think, oh gosh, we're gonna put these plants in and the caterpillars are going to eat them. Yes, that, that is the role of a host plant, is for the caterpillars to eat, but they won't kill your plants. The plants will survive and regrow. But it's really important to have some space in our gardens for the host plants because when the host plants and the feeding plants are very far apart in the neighborhoods, it makes it more difficult for our butterflies to survive. So when you take a look on the web, you can find the different types of host plants that are great for our butterflies out there. And you can plant those and have the ability for butterflies to be growing and living in your garden in all of the life cycles. And it's really, uh, really a neat experience to see. So these are out there. This is a, a swallowtail butterfly, um, one of many that you can find in your gardens. Lots of butterflies here. You may be uh, familiar with the monarch as well. Um, but yes, look for these in your garden. It's their time uh, seasonally, so they're out there for you. Ah, we've got a question. Where can we find the bug house at the zoo? 
we are located over in the children's zoo area. Um, we're actually quite close to the giraffe exhibit. So if you come across straight from the giraffes, you'll find us tucked behind some shaded trees. I'm gonna take one moment and talk about one more activity that you guys can do now that it's summertime. This is really special. We haven't talked about this before with our guests. This isn't a bug, <laughs> obviously, but I wanna talk a moment about an activity called black lighting or white sheeting, depending on who you're talking to. This is a mercury vapor lamp. You can uh, put this up uh, in your yard. Really, really bright, intense light. Um, and then you hang up, this is a, a sheet, a white sheet. Hang that up next to the lamp. After dark, turn it on. You're gonna start to attract insects to your yard or wherever you're set the sheet up. You're gonna find all kinds of really cool bugs that live in your neighborhood that you had no idea were there. Lots of moths, even some beetles, perhaps even some aquatic insects that you had no idea were living in your neighborhood. The longer you leave the light on, the more types of insects you're gonna attract. It's a super fun activity you can do in your neighborhood or if you go camping. So if you have the ability, try it out. It's a really cool activity to do. We know that insects have been kind of on the decline a bit. So I wanna tell you guys, there are things we can do to help with uh, protecting the insects that are living in our neighborhoods and are so cool. One of those is recycling. But recycling paper products especially, we are helping preserve our neighborhood trees and vegetation and all the habitats that bugs need to live and thrive. Another action we can all do is by reducing our use of pesticides in our garden. By reducing our use of pesticides, we are keeping more bugs healthy because pesticides not only target the pest insects, but they can inadvertently target the beneficial insects like these as well. And we want to protect these. There are many things we can do. We can plant plants that deter pest insects. Plants like rosemary and mint. A lot of pest insects don't like those plants. We can also use biocontrol, putting things like lacewing insects that are predatory or using mantids or using ladybugs are the types of activities that we can do to help protect our gardens. And we invite you to help us protect our gardens and as well as visiting us because by doing that, you're helping to save all kinds of wildlife here and around the world. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, during your next visit, uh, please be sure to cool off inside the bug house. We'll see you later, thank you.